Well, hello there. I'm Nusha, also known as Ferocious and Pretty Pens, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is dedicated to all things related to fountain pens, fountain pen inks, penmanship, artsy fartsy things, or whatever I feel like filming that particular week. If you're returning, so glad to have you back. Today's video is going to be another fountain pen review. I've gone a little bit fountain pen purchase crazy. I'm on a no ink buy right now. I have been since December and I've been really good. But apparently the floodgates have opened on the purchasing of fountain pens because I just received my Scribo Feel in Biola and we are going to do a review of that today. We'll go over a little bit of the background of the company. I'll do the unboxing, a writing sample, and then we'll wrap up and I'll give you my thoughts on if I think this is worth it or not. So if you're interested in that, then keep watching. So a little bit about Scribo. I get really confused with all of the Italian companies that branched from this company and merged with that one and then there was a hostile takeover from Russia or China or wherever. Anyway, I I'm not going to pretend like I'm the expert when it comes to all things related to Italian fountain pens. You probably know more about them than I do. I do know that what is special about the Scribo company and the Scribo feel nib is that Scribo was founded once Omas fell, our beloved Omas that fell in 2016. We hope you rest in peace and we wish that you could be resurrected, but it hasn't happened. So Scribo was literally something that came out of Omas finally leaving the pen world. And the cool thing about Scribo is that apparently all of the, the nib machinery that was used for the Omas pens has been kept by the group that is now running Scribo. So you hear a lot that the Scribo feel flex nib is very close, if not identical, to the Omas. And while Omas pens are beautiful pens, you know, Italian, you know, pens at their finest, in my opinion. They have some of the most beautiful material, best attention to detail, but at the end of the day, they are a joy to write with. Their nibs are some of the best nibs that I have in my collection. So that's kind of a bold statement saying that the Scribo feel nibs are gonna be exactly the same. I know the machinery is supposedly exactly the same, but what I'm gonna do in this review is we'll go through, I'll do the unboxing, we'll do a writing sample with the Scribo feel, and then I'm gonna bust out my Omos pens and we are gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. I don't know if it's gonna come out well or not, but we're gonna give it a shot because that's, that's a pretty big claim. If the machinery is the same, if the nibs are the same, then, you know, this is gonna be something that I'm gonna say is 100% worth it, but I'm gonna hold off on my verdict until after we have done the writing sample and done all of that jazz. So, with that said, I'm gonna swap camera angles and we are gonna go forth and unbox, even though I've already unboxed it. So here is the pen. It comes in this sleeve and then you have the inner box. Now I'm not gonna kid you guys, I've already inked it. I've been using it for a little over a week now because I really wanted to make sure that when I sat down and did this review. Oh my God, is that cat hair? I did the pen justice in having fully used it instead of just doing a first impressions. So we're gonna pretend like this is the first time I've ever seen this before and we're gonna act really surprised and in awe. Ooh, ah, he. So just uh, go with me here, <laughs> pretend. So you open it up and you have the information about the warranty service, all of that in there, which last time I, I read this for the Santini Italia, I feel like I, <laughs> evil-eyed myself. So we're just gonna leave that there in case we need it someday and make sure there are no cats present for the filming of this so that it's unlike Santini Gate. So you receive this really nice 
wraparound pen case and this is I believe leather leather and it comes like this and you also receive this cloth for cleaning your pen and your your nib and then the pen is actually on this side and pull it out and we're going to look at it now I think it's cool that they offer a sort of wraparound case like this it's canvas it's something that has utility in my opinion so we're just gonna put this over here and let's get a look at the pen okay you know what time it is it's sexy pen time <laughs> Now that I've given you the goods via sexy pen time, let's talk about the actual pen itself. It took me quite a while to buy my first Scribo, and this is my first Scribo. So welcome, you have front row seats to this. And the reason for that is I wasn't the biggest fan of the overall form factor. For some reason, this, I don't know, hourglass shape wasn't something that really attracted me. It wasn't until they released this material that I decided to go for it. There's something about the facets and the shape itself that really helps the chatoyance of this pen pop. And after having had it and used it for a while now, I can tell you that it's actually a very comfortable pen. The way that it fits in my hand is so comfortable. I really enjoy writing with it. And me poo-pooing on the shape before I'd ever even tried it, Shame on me. I shouldn't have done that. Don't judge a book by its cover, Nusha. You know better than that. It's not a heavy pen by any means, but it's not a super light pen. It has a little bit of weight to it. It's still light, but it just feels like an expensive, well-made pen. And I really like a lot of the different sorts of touches that they put on the pen from, you know, this, I guess, feather or it might be a quill to the engraving of Scribo Italy on the finial, to the fact that it says feel the writing, which again, it's, it's their motto and it's incorporated really well in an unobtrusive way into the design of the pen. The other thing that I find really interesting is the way that they've faceted the pen. I'm not sure if it comes across. So if you're somebody that doesn't like facets where you grip, you can grip a little bit higher up on the pen and it's completely round. And then it eventually ends up in those facets down here. The good thing though is that this metal piece down here, if you are somebody that holds down here, isn't sharp. So it's not going to cut into your, I guess this is called a writer's callus. In my last video I called it my finger bunion. <laughs> if you have a writer's callus, it's not going to cut into it. So it's overall pr pretty comfortable. I don't have any issues with the facets being obtrusive. They're not sharp, they're pretty comfortable. Oh, and I didn't mention this, it's a piston filler. It has an ebonite feed along with the 14 karat flex nib that I got. For the writing sample, I'm using my Nebula Note with 52 GSM Tomoy River paper in it. The pen is inked with Robert Oster Viola. I will mention one thing upon inking the pen with this color that the nib and feed had issues keeping up. I had a lot of railroading. What I found was that over the course of the last week or so that this ink has been sitting in this pen and I've been using it, that it's almost like the feed sucked up some of the ink or something and I don't have those issues anymore of railroading. It might be that I just needed to thoroughly flush the pen the first time before using it or the ebonite feed needed to get saturated in ink.
So here is the overall completed writing sample. And what I found very interesting about this is that if you look in the bigger writing sample, the ink flow isn't quite as generous. It's almost like the nib feed, while it was for the most part able to keep up, we had one instance of railroading, it wasn't as wet as what I was expecting. But when I wrote smaller, it was very wet. This is as comfortable as I felt in pushing the nib for flex reasons. This and this. For smaller writing, for some reason, it flexed out a little bit more than it did for the larger writing sample, or it might just be my eyeballs are deceiving me. This is the OMOS 557S with an extra flexible nib, and this, I think, is the OMOS Paragon Ladies Edition. I could be wrong. If you know what the model of this pen is exactly, please feel free to leave it in the comments and educate me. I just know that this also has another flexible nib, and this one is a beast when it comes to flexing. What are you doing? This is a cat-free zone. Protect the pans! Pardon me, sir. I'm going to have to ask you to vacate the premises. Bless your little heart. Thank you. As I was saying, this small little pen is a beast when it comes to flexing. It has amazing line variation from ultra extra fine all the way to like fatty boom batty like you wouldn't believe. So, okay, this is just getting ridiculous. <laughs>So I picked colors from Robert Oster that are similar in dryness and shading capability to the Viola that is in the Scribo. I put Sydney Harbor Darling in the 557S and the pen of unknown name, I put Australian Sky Blue. Okay, so I busted out the macro lens for this to let you see what this nib can do. Hopefully I'm in focus. This one. For how small of a pen and nib this is, it just has the greatest amount of line variation out of the three. So there is the full page. We have the Scribo up here, which did have some issues with railroading, and it just seemed a little bit drier, even when I wrote smaller. And then you have the Omas 557S here that was just super juicy throughout. You saw the tines spreading as I was using it. And then you have the Ladies Paragon <laughs> down here that you just saw is a beast. It went from a finer line than the 557 in the Scribo to pretty close to as fat of a line. So for the wrap up, do I think this is worth it? I paid a little over 600 US dollars for this. And before I answer that question, let's backtrack for a second. 
The elephant in the room is the comparison of the Scribo field to OMAS. And I showed you, I did the comparison, and while they are really close, they're not exactly the same. It's like you have twins and one of them has a mole. They're just a little different. And I can tell you, visually speaking, when you look at the nibs, there is tipping on the nib for the Scribo feel, fine flex that I have, whereas there is little to no tipping in the Omas nibs that I have. It's very minimal, barely there. And that makes me wonder if that's part of why there's a little bit of a difference in the overall my comfort in flexing it as far as I flex the Omas nibs. And before anybody comes after me, I know I flex mine pretty far. But you have to know this about me. I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have never sprung a nib before, and that should tell you something, that I know just how far to push my fountain pens that have flex. So the fact that I don't feel comfortable doing it with this one might just be because it's a brand new pen. And the other thing that you might say is, well... Nusha, you put a different ink color in the Scribo than you did in your Omos pens. How do we know that's even a fair comparison? Well, my friend, the reason why I can tell you it's fair is that I know my ink collection very well. Robert Oster is a small ink batch maker, and the inks that I own that are, you know, the Viola, the Sydney Harbor Darling, as well as the Australian Sky Blue. In my collection, the batches that I have are super dry. So when I tell you that the Omas pens were just a lot juicier, it's with certainty. And part of me wonders if it's because of the fact that those were not new pens to me. They were, you know, previously owned pens. I, I, don't, I don't know. It, you know, why there was the railroading with this pen. Because you would think that if the machinery uh, and the feeds and all of that stuff is the same between the Omas and now, you know, Scribo, that it should be exactly the same, but it's really not. With all of that said, even though, you know, one twin has a mole and the other doesn't, I absolutely think that this is an amazing pen. This is as close to Omas that you are going to get on the market. And it just, it feels amazing writing with it. I now understand where they came up with their, their branding of Feel the Writing. It's a great experience. And when I write in cursive, it's amazing. It's beautiful. My print looks like ass with this, but my cursive, it just feels freaking phenomenal. So if you have been thinking about getting a Scribo feel and you're not sure, you think, you know, the shape is a little bit odd, you didn't like some of the materials that came out in the past, I think the Viola is a gorgeous material and they recently came out with another one that's like this speckled nighttime sky almost and it's gorgeous. I've seen it in Zoom calls and things like that. It's beautiful. I can only imagine how beautiful it is in person. So if you're on the fence, I think that this is something that you're going to like. Yes, I know it's not exactly the same as Omas, but it's pretty freaking close. It has a mole. You can get it laser etched off. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, I would really love it if you gave this video a like. And if you're not already subscribed, consider doing so because, you know, we, we tend to have fun on this channel, I guess. <laughs> I, I'm having a blast. I don't know about you guys. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and remember, keep writing. It's like Sesame Street. Near, far, near, far. <laughs> Is the sound okay? Hello, hello. Hello, ha, ha, era, era. Do you ever decide to do your makeup? This is for those that wear makeup. Ever decide that you're gonna put on makeup?
and you're like, oh my god, it's going to be natural. I'm going to do like a natural look. And the next thing you know, it looks like you dumped your head in craft glitter. Me, right now. 52 GSM, don't my refer drives me batshit crazy. It keeps freaking moving around. Sir, can we not do this? I must protect the pans. Why? Why are you so curious about this? I swear to God, if you come off my desk one more time, we are breaking up. I am putting you up for adoption. Amazing. I, 100 out of five stars. Five, what? I don't, what did I just say? I don't, I, eh. stay out of my face, hair. You don't know my life. <laughs>